So in the June 18th edition of Nature, we're, dis we're announcing the discovery of a new dinosaur in China, which is the culmination of many years of work in China that, that Dr. Xu Sheng and I have been pursuing in an area called Wu Saiwan, in rocks that are about 159 million years old. So in 2001, we discovered the first of these, and the surprising thing about them was that they were stacked one on top of the other. So there was a stack of these dinosaurs. Unfortunately, that stack of dinosaurs uh, didn't have any skeletons with skulls or the front half of the skeleton. So we found another stack of dinosaurs in 2002 uh, when our geologists really started to figure out that what had happened was these things had been stuck in the mud and had mucked around uh, while they were caught in the mud and they couldn't get out. So they were captured in this mud. So we found more skeletons of this animal, but, but again, they didn't have skulls and really didn't have much in the way of the front part of the skeleton. So that part is very crucial to understanding what these animals are. So finally, in 2005, we found another big block that was the result of animals stuck in the mud. And it had a beautiful skeleton with a skull and the whole front arm. And finally, we were able to see what this was. And it was an unusual dinosaur. This is the first dinosaur of this group that was found in, uh, in Asia, a group called Ceratosaurs. So we were able to say, finally, well, we have this really interesting animal. And it was strange in that it didn't have any teeth, even though it was related to animals like T. rex uh, and other carnivorous dinosaurs. So we realized we had this very strange dinosaur, um, and it was the first of its kind in Asia. And we finally understood what these things that had been caught in the mud were. Once we started looking at the hand, though, we realized it had importance beyond that. It wasn't just another interesting dinosaur, but in fact it was telling us something about one of the big problems that people have had in, in studying dinosaur evolution. And that problem is that if you look at the hands of dinosaurs, and especially the theropod dinosaurs that are thought to be the most closely related animals to birds, the, the group that birds descended from, the hands gradually during their evolution lose the outer digits, or at least it looks like they've lost the outer two digits. But if you look at bird hands and how the embryo, embryos of birds develop, they look to be the second and third and fourth fingers, so that they've lost the first and the fifth, the inner and the outer ones. So this didn't, didn't really match up with what we understood about theropod dinosaur evolution. So people had argued about what had gone on in theropod evolution and suggested there were shifts in the fingers uh, during development, um, but nobody had any evidence for it. So the hand that we had uh, <coughs> showed that this was a, essentially a transitional dinosaur between the primitive basal theropods that had five fingers on their hands and the more advanced forms that had three that looked to be the first, second, and third what our dinosaur showed was that, in fact, the very first finger had been lost. So our hand, the hand of this new ceratosaur, it has a very small first finger and a very big second finger. And what happened was that they lost the first finger and the second finger took on the shape of the first finger of the more primitive and the more advanced forms. So it's a very interesting animal. I mean, it really is what you might call a missing link that's telling us you know, how did this strange anomaly in, in the development of bird fingers, um, how did that arise during the evolution of theropod dinosaurs?